on today's Maker Mashup, day four of our 3D printer build. Okay, welcome to day four of our 3D printer build. Uh, what we've got here is our X axis built. We've already done our Y. And now the next step is to do the Z. So what we're going to actually do here is we're going to loosen up these bolts just a little bit uh, to gain a little bit of clearance. We're going to just slide this back now that we have uh, our X axis ready to go here. Uh, the front of the printer is facing you and the camera. So you can see here we lose just a little bit of space, which we expected. Uh, and then what we're going to do here is just loosen these bolts up, move it back a little bit, and then we're going to attach the Z axis, which is going to be the lead screws. And we're also going to go ahead and put in the linear rods to guide it up there. So those guide rods will be in here. So that is going to be our Z axis for today. And we're going to finish that up. And then our next video will focus on the electronics and focus on getting the extruder nozzle in place. And at that point, we'll have a working printer. So stick around and let's get to work. All right. The first thing we're going to do is review the parts that are needed for today. Then we're going to shift the axis back about 50 millimeters. That'll give us some clearance for the nozzle and the carriage. Then we're going to mount the stepper bracket in linear rail, install the steppers, then we're going to work together to mount the carriage with the lead screws. We'll put that in place. And then afterwards, we're going to install the belt and tension it. The parts we're going to need for today are going to be two Z stepper brackets and two linear rail mounts. These are both 3D printed parts. We're going to need two linear rails. These are about 400 millimeters in length. We're also going to need two stepper motors and two lead screws. The lead screws are 350 millimeters long and they're the ones that we took the nuts off of on day three. And we're also gonna need ourselves two couplers. The couplers will attach the lead screws to the steppers. And then we're gonna need one belt and some zip ties to attach that along with some various screws to complete the task. Danny is going to go ahead and start here by marking exactly where the extrusion used to be. So we can push this back a little bit. We're going to loosen the screws and then we're going to measure back 50 millimeters and we're going to push this back. You need to make sure that you loosen the screws on both sides of these bonding plates. Otherwise you won't be able to move that. It's much easier if you use two hands and try to push both sides back at the same time, and then just use your thumbs to gently push it back. Once you feel like you've moved this about 50 millimeters, the next step is just to measure it and confirm that you've pushed it back far enough. Now we're gonna move on to our Z stepper assembly. This is just the mount here, and you're gonna to wanna to preload this with four of the M5 screws and the T-nuts. Once you have it preloaded with those screws, you're gonna to wanna to mount this about 10 millimeters above the actual bottom. It's a little hard to see here, but you need to have it about 10 millimeters off of the bottom base of the 4040 extrusion. That way the stepper will slide in underneath it. Now we're gonna to wanna to slide this rail into the bottom stepper mount. It's a little difficult to get in here. It's a very tight fit but once it's in there, it'll stand freely all by itself. Then we're gonna to want to attach it with the bracket at the top. This attaches onto the extrusion, but we're not gonna tighten the linear rail into this bracket just yet. So once we get that on there, we'll move on to the next step. Now we're gonna slide this stepper in underneath, and then we're gonna attach the stepper with some of these M3 screws. Next, we're gonna go ahead and attach the coupler. These couplers have one side that's smaller that fits the stepper bracket. And make sure that when you install this that you're using the flat stop on the stepper mount so that way that screw fits nice and flush against it. 
And then after this, we're going to go ahead and install the one on the other side and then mount the carriage assembly. You're going to want to make sure that the lead screws are through about halfway. And then you're going to want to work together to work with someone to put into the lead screws into those couplers. And then the rails, as you can see, we pushed up so that way we could get the lead screws in place. And then you're just going to want to bring the, the rods down through the bearings. And nothing here needs to be forced. All you have to do is turn these screws a little bit to get everything evened out. And then once it's started and evened out, you'll find that everything slides right into place and lines up perfectly. Once that's in place, then you're going to want to go back and tighten up these linear rods into the brackets. Now we're going to insert a couple of screws into the carriage assembly here. And these screws are going to be responsible for holding the belt. After the screws are in, we're going to want to put a couple of nuts on here. And this is just going to hold that screw in place. After you have both screws on, the next step here is going to be to wrap the belt around the entire carriage. So you're going to loop that all the way around. And then at the very end here where this screw is, you're going to want to overlap it onto itself and then fasten it with a zip tie. I actually use two zip ties here and the teeth on this are going to be touching each other. So that will help keep it from moving as well. So once you get one side done, you're going to want to go back and then do the other. Once you have both sides complete, now you're just going to want to go in here and clean up your zip ties and clip off any excess belt that you have in here. That way it doesn't get caught in the carriage assembly or when the belt loops back around. The final step is to use these adjustment screws to tighten the belt. You're going to want to do this evenly on both sides so that way that belt tightens up and is nice and tight. Okay, so this is the end of day four. We now have our Z axis all built. Uh, the only thing that is left is the nozzle and the extruder and then the electronics. So we're going to cover that in our next video. So I hope you enjoyed everything here. If you did, make sure you mash that like button and put some comments of encouragement down there for Danny as well. He's worked really hard on this printer. He's done a lot of work and uh, I think he's done a great job on this. Uh, so mash that like button and don't forget to subscribe so you see the next video in the series. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.